Uh, I bought this long cutter from Trend. I had a choice of a few. This was the longest sort of standard one. It's got a longer shank on it, so you can stick it out a little bit if you need to. Can't really hear it. You can get deep, deep pocket cutters, quite a bit longer. But I chose this one. Hard to explain, really. The actual cut is only 65, I think it's a 63 only thing, but the shank's a bit longer. And the overall's 115. At the moment I've set it in so that it's flush with the base, or just below. So when I lift it up, so I can sit the machine on there and plunge down otherwise the cut will be sitting on the wood before I start cutting what I don't like about this is that flat face I'm going to be working off my fence which means I can't twist this but I'll be stopping there and then this side if I put a stop on it'll be coming up against that see this one the old McKeat one. It's got a nice round base so it doesn't really matter what position you put the cut put the router in. I prefer that to be round. We'll see. Right, jigs and things are cool. They help you work. They're a bit of a pain sometimes to set up, but by the time you've set them up it makes the rest of the work go so easily so much more easily but this one's been a right fucking pain clamps are in the way of the fence so when I slide along yeah so bollocks to it I've just screwed it on I'll work out where this stops and put another one of these on wherever that goes So I can work out that distance now where to put this stop. So 179. I want a mortise of 75. And that distance from the edge of there to the edge of there when I made that cut was 53. So I'll come back 53. So I thought I got it wrong then, but that's my mark. That's my 75 to there. Just looking at that.
Uh, I think I've still got a little bit to go. But that stops getting in the way. I put it on the littlest one thinking I'd need that that way around. I think I'll have to turn this. I turned it but when it clicked into its into its pocket the knob was getting in the way. These have got a little screw and a nut so I could probably wind that down a bit. But at the moment I've just soft set it. A very neat cut. It's the main reason why I'm choosing to do it like this with a mortiser, with a you know press mortiser. Lots of little cuts, and that machine's not very good, so they were always offset by you know half a millimeter, a millimeter. But it's got to clean them up, which just it's just not accurate. But that's a very neat cut all the way down. Let's see what depth I've got. Uh, full depth. I've only got 65 mil. That machine's got a plunge of 80 mil apparently. Mm. So why have I only got 65? You can measure this bit. That's about 67, 68, maybe 70, a bit awkward to, a bit awkward to measure it. But that's only about 70 mil. So why does it say it's got a plunge depth of 80 mil? Oh, this was wound down a little bit. It's still only Less than 75 mil. Stay on, twat. Right, I bought this machine because it said it's got a plunge depth of 80 mil. Either I'm missing something. Got a little bit to go down there, but it's only 70 summer, it might go to 75, and it just poked its way through this timber, just went through. I felt it go through, and that's 70 mil. So, how am I missing 5 mil? This thing's its forest. I wonder if I could undo that and wind that out at 5mm. That would let me stick the cutter out because at the moment I've got the cutter just flush with the base, just a fraction back so that when I put the machine on the base is sitting and the cutter isn't protruding otherwise it, I'd have to set the cutter going first but even then I'd still only get 75mm depth. Right, I've undone that nut. I'm just going to put it touching it so that I know how far I've moved this. Oh. I don't want those to spring off. Look 
going to a few millimetres though. And I'll wound it out a little bit more. I was holding onto the bottom, needed two hands to do that. But I've gained, I've gained nearly five mil there. So I'll lock this back up. I've locked that back up. That's pretty tight against there, so these arms I've moved out and locked that up. So, move that cutter out, and it's about two mil off the face of that. As I say, I want this base to be sitting, sitting on here before the cutter does. You see, there's loads of shank left. The shank's forty mil long. So there's loads in the machine in the collet there see what plunge I've got I swung on that but I'll just make sure that's tight proper tight All right, so I'll just unlock that wound that in a bit so now it can sit in its proper seats wherever that is I think that's it. If this was my cute, I wouldn't have to do all this shit. So that isn't touching anymore. The arms don't seem to want to go down any more than that. Let's see what full depth I've got now. Looking through there, I would say that's about 75 mil. Not the 80 mil I was promised. I'll make a cut, see how deep it goes. I wanted to see if I could e eke a little bit more out. So the machine's locked off at the moment, so these arms aren't going to move. And I wound this out to see, I was curious as to how much thread was in there. That was where it was locked off like that. You see there's a good, good 20 mil in the machine there. So I want my full 80 mil. And at the moment it's 75, so I'm going to wind that in till I'm 5 mil off there. That'll do. And I'll lock that off and see if these arms will come out another 5 mil. I swung on that. I'll keep an eye on it. If there's a problem, I'll put some Loctite on it. Let's unlock it. See if I gain 5 more mil. Cool. That seems to press okay. Oh, the cut's getting in the way. That seemed to press okay all the way. So now I'll move my cutter up flush with base again. So So that's flush again, well, it's a millimetre or so back. It's locked off, nothing's in the way, full depth. So. closer to the 80 mil. I need to make a cut. That piece of 3 by 2 is not big enough, it's only 70 mil. But I've got a block in here, I'm just going to make a little cut, see how deep I can get. So I made a little cut. That's the original depth, full depth that I had. how much I've gained. So 
now I'm getting getting the full 80 mil off. And I just cut that first one that I did in the softwood, cut it in yeah. half. And that looks pretty parallel to me. So I'm fairly confident that this square jig thing will cut straight, not at an angle. Don't want it going in like that. Need nice and straight. That's one cut. I need to do the haunch about 20 mil deep and then spin this around, mount it on the other side and cut the other side. I've got four at that size to do. So do I adjust this and cut the haunch? But then I'll have to set the depth. Or do I do them all like this and set the depth, remount the jig and do the haunch? Yeah. Right, that second cut was alright. Slightly in there. But it worked out okay. The cutter was on the second cut the cutter was cutting in. So when I drew it back it was rolling along there so I had to just back it off a little bit when I returned. I'll try and show you on the next one. So this is the next one. On the first cut, the cutter's cutting, but it's cutting both sides of the, you know, the cutter. So it's it runs fairly true. But then when you return, it's only taking a small piece off. Right, so for this second pass, it's only taking off a piece about that big. So the cutter's cutting into it, like that. But then on the return stroke, it's none, it just, just wants to run along there. Slightly set back, I think. What happens is either this moves, I've got a lot. I think when I'm doing this cut, because it's not screwed down, because there's no timber, it's banging that. Sometimes when you get to the end, it goes because it's trying to be, bite off the whole, whole depth of wood. See, it's slightly cut in there. It's okay. 